Hi everyone, and welcome to Tech Tip episode 14, where we'll talk about Pipple for uh, password analysis. All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, Pipple, and uh, Pipple is a password analysis tool that just gives us some relevant statistics uh, based on a password dump that we give it. So I give it a, a password dump from, say, one of the recent events. It'll go through it, and I'll start carving out some interesting information out of there, such as um, how long each of the passwords were, um, and uh, were there particular trends that were seen, such as uh, particular characters that were always seen, or say the top 10 most used base characters, you know, stuff like that. So it's going to give you some really good information that can then be used to analyze some password trends, create some better word lists, and of course, uh, educate users, right? So as we are able to understand more about the passwords people are using, and we know those patterns, we can educate users so they are not using those patterns, particular, uh, particularly our users, the ones that we're protecting, and whichever organization that we represent. So uh, where can you get uh, Pipple? You can get that over at GitHub um, and DigiNinja's uh, profile. And just to show you real quick, you can also go to diginincha.org, projects, Pipple, and uh, you'll see here he gives a lot of information uh, about the product or project, as well as uh, some examples of it, and where to download it, and so on and so forth. So go here. Um, this is created by uh, the folks at DigiNinja, and of course he gives some credits to some other people here. So uh, yeah. Um, so on GitHub, you'll see it here. So you can just download all these. Um, there's no special gems that, that are needed. You just have to uh, download these files. And as long as you're running uh, Ruby 1.9.x or greater, you will uh, you'll be fine. Now Backtrack 5 by default comes with uh, Pipple, but it comes with Pipple 1.0. So if you want some of the more recent features. Um, like adding, they've recently added months and uh, zip codes and stuff like that. Um, then you're going to want 2.0, which you just download here, put in whatever directory you want, and you can run it. And uh, of course, um, DigiNinja is also responsible for some other projects that we've we've used here on the show. So uh, 2Fi is one of the ones that we took looked at before, where we um, took some keywords and uh, it scans Twitter and based on those keywords makes some word lists for them. So that's kind of a cool tool. But he has a bunch of other ones here and there are also uh, some other categories of tools that he contributes to. So uh, you know, check out the other projects that he does. Alright, so uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do is uh, of course you need a password dump to play with or just a really large word list if you want to use that. Um, but there are several out there. Uh, you can find some of them here at skullsecurity.org um, in their passwords. And you'll see here uh, the weak password list. Those are the ones that you probably want to use uh, as these are real life scenarios, right? So these are all incidents in which uh, certain organizations or companies uh, were compromised and usernames, passwords, the, that type of information was leaked out and here's where you can download the information from those. Uh, this doesn't have all the latest stuff on here. For instance, I don't see the Yahoo one on here. Um, and I don't think I see LinkedIn either. Uh, but it has a, a pretty good base to start off with, um, at, at least for learning what you're, what you're doing with this product. So you can grab these. Um, of course, these are also very good lists to use for um, creating your, your own word list. Uh, RockU is one of the largest ones to date. might be the largest, I'm not sure there, but it's one of the largest ones to date. So definitely if you don't have the RockU uh, word list, grab that because it's great for other things as well, right? Throwing in uh, John the Ripper or whatever. So grab those word lists. So we're going to find one. I already had one in mind. I'm going to use the Yahoo one that was uh, out recently. Uh, so for those of you who don't know about the Yahoo breach, basically um, 
there was a host at Yahoo that was susceptible to SQL injection. Um, the Deeds group, I believe was the name of it, went ahead and, and uh, leveraged that SQL injection attack to download or dump the database, which happened to have clear text, username and password combinations, a whole lot of them. So uh, it was a pretty big deal, maybe like three months ago, might have been even a little bit longer than that. Um, but this, you know, kind of exemplifies it because, uh, it, you know, no matter how strong of a password you have, if, if some company stores your passwords in clear text and they're compromised, uh, it doesn't matter. So you're still uh, uh, SOL out of that, uh, in that scenario. All right, so let's get back to the actual demo here. So you're going to get uh, a password dump somewhere from here or just watching media and seeing uh, or paste bin and, and as you see things you grab them. Um, now once you have them you have to get them into uh, a format that Pipple can can use. Um, so a lot of times they're going to be like a full database dump so that has a lot of information in it that we don't want Pipple to see for instance. So just to give you a uh, an idea of what I'm talking about. Let's go to leaked passwords. It's a directory I have here. And let's go with the uh, Yahoo disclosure. So if I nano Yahoo pack disclosure txt, and we'll give it a second, it's a large file. All right, so you'll see it has a whole bunch of stuff in here that we don't necessarily want uh, Pipple to look at because it's going to think all of these are things that could be passwords and it's going to analyze everything here. Um, so what we want to do is take out all of this stuff, take out the MySQL variables, the database table column names, and the final notes, and we just want to leave section 3 down here which has 450,000 users and passes. So we're going to go ahead and delete, just delete these manually. Um, so delete these sections or just pull out section 3 manually. But that's not enough because that still has users and passwords. So I went ahead and did that. Um, and I believe that is the Yahoo UN pass. So let's go ahead and G... No, we'll nano that as well. Yahoo UN B. So if you look at this, now we're left with this. We have uh, the ID, and then we have the username, password. ID, username, password. ID, username, password. But we don't want all that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut some of that stuff out so we just have the password. All right, so what we're going to do now is uh, cut out the stuff that we don't need. So I'm going to cat the Yahoo UMP, and then I'm going to pipe over to the cut command where I'm going to tell it uh, tac D for uh, it's delimited by comma, is what I'm writing there, and then I'm going to give it a tac F3 because I want to choose the third field, and then I'm going to pipe over the results, or uh, I'm going to output the results to. Uh, a file which we'll call Yahoo Passes. txt. So now, if I nano Yahoo Passes. txt, we should just have a file that has only uh, the passwords. So here are all the passwords in there. And you can see there's a ton of them. So let's get out of that. So now we have a file that's ready for Pipple. So let's get Pipple running on there. Um, and to run Pipple, all I'm going to do is dot slash Pipple. And I'm going to give it the directory where that file was. So mine's going to be home slash leaked passwords. Um, and we call that one Yahoo Passes dot txt. 
and we're going to output it with the techo to um, demo. All right, so now it's going to run through it. Now, depending on the size of this list, this could be very quick or very slowly. Um, so this one will take about, it says six minutes there. I, I find that that number um, is, is usually less than what it actually takes. So this will probably take eight to 10 minutes to run, um, but this is you know, 450,000 passwords. It's a lot of passwords. Um, whereas you know a leak with a couple thousand passwords would be almost instant for this to be done. So uh, rather than have you wait through all this, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out because I've already run this once. So you'll see um, in that last one we did demo. Now we're going to do, uh, or the one I did previous to that it was Yahoo demo. So let's look at the results. Um, so we've gone ahead and, and ran the program and now we're gonna analyze the results. So um, to make this a little easier on us, I'm going to go ahead and g-edit Yahoo demo. All right. So you'll see this is the amount of entries that it analyzed. So uh, 442,837 of those, there are 342,509 unique passwords. So there's a lot of password reuse there. So now it's going to start giving us the statistics that we want to see. So uh, our top 10 passwords, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, password, welcome, ninja, ABC, 1, 2, 3, so as you can see here. Uh, some of them expected, some of them probably not. Uh, but it, that's a decent amount of passwords. So top 10 base words. So these are uh, not necessarily words that make up the entire password, but words that are within a password. Uh, the top one be there, not surprisingly, being password, but there's also different combinations as well. So we have welcome and qwerty and monkey, Jesus, love, money, money, freedom, ninja, and sunshine. So now we start to get a better feel for, um, you know, with a large sample set, what people are actually using for their passwords and what words are being used in their passwords. And we can start. Um, modifying our word list to uh, take these into account. So what else do we got here? Password length. So this tells you um, password length of one. There was 116 passwords with a length of one character. Two characters, three characters, uh, five, six. And then we got percentages over here as well to help us out. So the most common is eight characters, which makes sense. That's pretty much what everyone uh, was taught for several years was you need to make your characters eight or more. So eight makes sense there. Um, let's go down to uh, password length count ordered. And here's a good graph for it. So here we're saying a lot of people had eight character passwords. Um, a graphical representation of what we were seeing. Uh, before. So this is the same list as above, uh, this one here, except it's just showing you uh, it, ordering it by the highest count. So eight character passwords followed by six, followed by nine, seven, ten. So one to six character passwords made up 19%. One to eight character passwords made up 61%. And more than eight, and more than eight characters made up 38%. All right, so in an effort to uh, not bore you, I'm, I'm not going to go ahead and read all these. Um, instead, I'll scroll through this quickly now. And of course, I'll, I'll have the full results up or on a Tech Defense uh, website if you want to check it out there. Um, so here you go. Yeah, so I see some really good stuff here. Uh, the years one is, is particularly funny to me because uh, as I noticed, um, you would expect 2010, 2011, 2012 to be just as large, if not larger, than 2009, 2008. Because uh, as people change their password, they commonly just add the year that they changed it on there as a number. Um, but the good thing to note here is 
uh, this particular password breach, this Yahoo password breach, was an old database um, from a migration of a company they bought called Associated Content. So uh, that probably was bought in the 2008-2009 time frame based on what I'm seeing here because uh, it looks like that's where the, uh, the database last left off. So plenty of good stuff here, and I know I just scrolled through it really quickly. And uh, of course, you see here at the end uh, the, the hash cat stuff. Uh, that's of course um, there to help you with with cracking passwords based on what we've seen here. So um, again, if you want to see the full analysis of this uh, along with the entire result, head over to techdefense.com, and I'll, I'll have it listed there. Um, like always, you can go to techdefense.com for my other videos as well. Additionally, Tech Defense offers IT consulting and security consulting services, so feel free to hit them up if you have any of those that need to occur. Um, you can reach me specifically at eenormous at techdefense.com. That's 1-A-N-0-O-R-M-U-S at techdefense.com. Uh, additionally, I have uh, my video channel over at SecurityTube, so check that out and uh, at YouTube as well. Um, thanks again, and hope you had a good one.